الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين عب القاسم محمد صل على محمد صلى الله عليك يا مولانا يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا ابن رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا ابن عمير المؤمنين صلى الله عليك يا ابن فاطمة المظلومة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وعمن من لجا إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوذ والله فوزا عظيما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم كتابي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات اللهم <تصفيق> صل على فد الله وف ابا عبد الله الحسين و ذا لاود صفا و فويس صلوا على محمد و ال محمد اللهم صل على محمد فد الله وف امام صاحب العصر والزمان ارواحنا له الفداء صلوا على محمد و ال محمد Once again we thank almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us with another wonderful moment wonderful opportunity tonight being the night of the shahada of our beloved fourth imam Imam Zainul Abidin salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh Allahumma salli ala Muhammad First and foremost our condolence goes to our beloved imam the imam of our time ruhi wa arwahi al alamina li turab makdami al fida on this occasion that marks the departure of his grandfather Imam Zain al Abidin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad And secondly our condolences go to our great scholars our maraji' who every day and night tirelessly trying their level best to give khidma and service to this religion especially to this sect of ours the school of thought of ahl al bayt and thirdly to all of you respected brothers and sisters on this occasion that marks the departure of the leader of all those who prostrate for the sake of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the verse i've chosen is a very known verse i'm sure to you because in most cases i use this verse to discuss the topics that we normally discuss about the personalities of ahlul bayt alayhi salatu was salam it is chapter tauba verse 119 where allah tabarak wa ta'ala call believers men and women اتقوا الله وقونوا مع الصادقين الله تبارك وتعالى said number one have the taqwa the consciousness of the teachings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى then after that taqwa don't limit yourself only to the taqwa after that taqwa try as much as you can to be with those who are truthful 
And we all know without a shadow of doubt, the truthful are Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu wassalam. So therefore, departing from this verse tonight, my topic will be Imam Zain al-Abidin as our guide and role model. When I talk of Imam Zain al-Abidin as a guide and role model, it means we need to follow the footsteps of Imam Zain al-Abidin. We need to make sure we understand the teachings of Imam Zain al-Abidin and try to implement those teachings in our lives. But if we claim that Imam Zain al-Abidin is our role model, Imam is our guide, which is of course through Allah's decree, and we fail to follow the guidance of Imam, then you are not the Shia of Imam. So therefore, our topic will be Imam Zain al-Abidin as a role model and as a guide. Because in today's day and age, we need no one else better than Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salatu wassalam. And my examination will be of two stages only. The first stage I want to look at how Imam Zain al-Abidin spread the message of Karbala and Ashura. In other words, our responsibilities towards the message of Karbala and the message of Abba Abdullah al -Husayn. And I believe strongly the best way to get to know your responsibilities towards this message of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is to learn it from Sayyida Zainab, is to learn it from Imam Zain al Abidin, is to learn it from Imam al Baqir alayhi salam. Of course, is to learn from Mukhtar al Thakafi because these were the people that are regarded as those who advocated for what transpired truly in Karbala. So, therefore, the first stage of the examination, we will look at the roles Imam Zain al Abidin played towards enlivening the affairs of Abba Abdullah al Husayn. And lastly, we will conclude by looking at the serious teachings of Imam Zain al Abidin on the impact of sins. Because Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, at one stage of his life, people came and asked him about the different sins and the different impact of those sins. That is how I want to do that examination of tonight. Let's begin. We all know about Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam 50 years. After the departure of Rasulullah obtained shahada in Karbala. Yani Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, he came to this world, he established justice, love, passion, whatever. Justice, we all know that. And people of the world got acclimatized to the teachings of Rasulullah. But 50 years on thoughts, the people of the world changed completely 120 degrees and went against the teachings of Rasulullah. Then Abba Abdullah, as we all know, had to go out and sacrifice himself. Now, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam had a very difficult task in life. In fact, some of them were rikhun historians said, if there are Shias, who have suffered a lot, they will be the Shias of Imam Zain al-Abidin after the battle of Karbala. Because we all know Imam Zain al-Abidin was crowned the next Imam in Karbala. When Abu Abdullah was bidding the farewell, he called everyone and he crowned Imam Zain al-Abidin being the next Imam. So therefore, immediately after Karbala, you all know these people, unfortunately, they had negative views about and thought about Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salatu wassalam. And of course they saw how Abba Abdullah stood against injustice. So therefore they planned, I'm just giving you this background, then you will be able to understand the role he played towards preserving this teaching of Karbala. When today khurafat, superstitions, are taking place and clouding the whole teachings of Ahl al-Bayt, and people now, they are becoming more inclined to superstitions rather than the true teachings of Al al Bayt and Imam Zain al Abidin. Therefore, it's very, very important for us to understand the background. Once you understand the background, then you will understand your role. Today, you have a role to play. It's not only for that time, it will continue until the reappearance of our awaited Savior. And for us to be able to respond reciprocally to the calling of Abba Abdullah, we need to understand the role the immediate Imam after Abba Abdullah assumed. 
Because we all know common sense will tell us whoever assumed the leadership after Abba Abdullah, his role was to make sure people understood why Abba Abdullah went to Karbala. So therefore, Imam Zain al-Abidin, according to some riwaya, 33 years he was Imam. Other riwaya say 34 years he was Imam. Very difficult. These people, they plan. Why it was difficult? Because Imam Zain al-Abidin, alayhi salam, he became Imam in those last months of the Khilafat of Yazid. Yani Yazid was still the Khalifa, according to them. When Abba Abdullah was killed in Karbala, so Imam became Imam while Yazid was the Khalifa of the time. You can imagine how difficult was it for Imam Zain al-Abidin. You imagine the Imam of your time was chained right from Karbala to Kufa and from Kufa to Sham and then coming back also some difficulties took place in Sham. Then they released them. Therefore, from here we tend to understand how difficult the atmosphere and the whole situation was for Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. Not only that, of course, Imam in most part of his imamates, it was the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. That was very difficult. And you know what they did to Imam? Therefore, today sometimes me as a Shia, wallahi, personally sometimes I ask myself, who I am to have all this ni'mah of Allah. When Ali al they did not have that ni'mah. What am I trying to say? Number one, Imam Zain al-Abidin, the plan they did against Imam, the moment he assumed leadership and he came back to Medina, they stopped Imam from having dars. Yani today we have dars in the madrasa, we have dars in the mosque, in the library. We sit together, we discuss Islam, we write. The first thing they did, they blocked Imam from having dars. Therefore, sometimes I ask a question. If today we have the opportunity to attend the dars, why we don't attend? When Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, upon all those difficulties, he managed to preserve this teaching for us, and today we don't value those teachings. We value secondary things rather than primary things in the school of thought of al Bayt. And I will give you examples of what I mean later on. Number two, they stopped Imam from establishing Juma. Today when we have Juma, some stay in the Sahan. I don't know what they are doing in the Sahan when khutbah is taking place. When it is the condition of the Juma, Imam alayhi salatu was salam for your information brothers and sisters. He was blocked from establishing Juma for a good number of years. Huh? Imam was not doing Juma. They were hiding. Number three, Imam alayhi, this is after Karbala, Imam alayhi salatu was salam did not have the opportunity to hold any official program. They made sure they blocked him from each and every corner and each and every angle. But upon all that, Imam Zain al-Abidin preserved these beautiful and golden teachings of Abba Abdullah al Hussein to me and you. So therefore today, for me and you to appreciate Imam Zain al-Abidin, for me and you to appreciate the effort of Imam, and the effort of Abba Abdullah is to make sure we adhere to his teachings and we learn those teachings and try to implement those teachings. If we do not do that, then we are not really true lovers of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. And upon all, the more difficult part of it, you know why? Um, we are he became Khalifa and ruled for a good number of 40 years. In those 40 years, you know, his motto was nothing but to speak against Amir al muminin So what Muawiyah, they try to do is that they try to take people away far from Ahl al-Bayt and the Fadail of Ahl al-Bayt. So therefore, when Imam alayhi salam became Imam, the first thing he did was to re-expose the people of the world to the fawail and the personalities of Ahl al -Bayt. That was the first role of our beloved Imam. And how did he do that? He did that by sensitizing the world about what truly transpired in Karbala. What they went through and what was the aim of the mission of Abba Abdullah al -Husayn. And Imam did that through Hadith and through Quran, which I will touch a little bit on them. The first one, you see, Imam Ali Salat was salam. During that time, he would always go to a certain corner. And he would remember what transpired in Karbala. He would recite a little bit of Musiba and what happened to Abba Abdullah. Sometimes we say, Ana Ibnu Atishana. 
I am the son who was thirsty in Karbala. Imam was doing that to inform people of what really happened in Karbala. Another way which Imam used to use is that Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever he want to teach something, he would never say from me. He will say the riwayah is from Rasulullah, and the riwayah is from Amir al muminin and the riwayah is from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Because there was a time when they blocked people even from reporting from the riwayah of Rasulullah. Let alone reporting the riwayah of Imam. So therefore the Shias today, we have a lot of role to play. We have a lot of role to play in exposing the world to the beauty of the message, which we are not doing it. When we commemorate Muharram, we hardly go out and expose people of the world about Muharram. We always keep it to ourselves. As I was mentioning weekend, some people, Zanjir is much better than them than Salah. Some people will prepare for Zanjir for one year. They will never prepare for Salat for three minutes. So this is not the message of Al Bayt. This is distortion of the message of Al Bayt. When you talk, somebody says, Azadari, what is Azadari? Azadari is to remember what happened and implement it in your life. So therefore, Imam alayhi salatu was salam, he will say from Rasulullah, he will say from Imam Ali. Therefore, when you read some of the khutbas of Imam Ali, you realize that those khutbas were reported by Imam Zain al abidi You just read some of the khutbas of Imam, the sermons of Imam. You realize that they were all from Imam Zain al abidi So Imam, with this effort, he tried to preserve that message of Ali Muhammad. He tried to make sure those messages reach each and every one of us. He tried to make sure we will not be orphans even after Karbala. We will be lively and will be rich with the message of Ali Muhammad. Therefore, to appreciate and be grateful to him is to try to implement those messages in your life. Number two, how did Imam do? It's through Quran. Quran. I mentioned it last week, Friday. Quran is what we need to be to establish relationship with. I told you Al Bayt sometimes if things will give a bad image to them, even if it's mustahab, they will tell their followers not to do. Many mustahab, Imam Jafar told you, don't do because if you do, it will give us bad name. So therefore, let alone something which we don't have any rewire from Al Bayt. Alayhi salatu was salam. Number two is Quran. Imam Zain al Abidin, as you know, during the time of Umayyah, they stopped people from asking the true companions of Rasulullah about the true commentary and interpretations of Quran. Until one day, Ibn Abbas came to Muawiyah and he asked him, Muawiyah, why are you stopping people from getting to know the true commentary of Quran? He said, No, I'm not stopping people, but I am stopping them from asking certain people. There are people they should ask. Therefore, you realize that Quran, even Sumara ibn Jundub, one day Muawiyah asked him, you know what he told him? He said, try to misplace all those reasons for the revelations of Quran. Therefore, Imam Zain al Abidin, when he assumed this authority, you know the first thing he used to do? Imam would sit in one corner and he would recite Quran loudly. Loudly. Today you have Shias of Ali Muhammad, they don't know how to recite Quran. Shias of Ali Muhammad, Imam alayhi salat, they came and asked him why. Then beautiful saying, Adis of Imam. Imam said, if people of the world, those in the west and east will perish and finish, and everybody will go and nobody is on the earth, and I have a Quran with me, I will not be the victim of the solution. I will not be the victim. So long as I have Quran with me, I have everything with me. So Imam would sit in one corner and he would recite Quran loudly to such an extent some people in Medina would come and hide in some corners and they would be listening to that Quran. Somebody came and asked him, Zainal Abidin, why are you reciting Quran loudly? He said, this is the reason why my father rose. Where are we in Quran today, the lovers of Ali Muhammad? I told you. If I don't do Quran and I don't do my salah, you do matam for Hussein, it's of no use. It's of no use. Instead, it gives bad name to Shias. If you do Zanjir and you don't know about your salah, it's a waste of time, I'm telling you. First, make sure those ibadah are intact. 
Children, they need to know about Ali Muhammad. They need to know Quran. They will ask you, they will hold your necks on the day of Qiyamah. Imam alayhi salatu was salam would recite Quran loudly. And Imam would say, I am doing it because my father stood for that. Let us teach our children Quran. Let us teach them the fadail of Ali Muhammad. Let us teach them what Ali al-Bayt stood for. Not to encourage our children to do things which there is no rewire or anything from Ali al-Bayt. Yes, everybody has his own unique of commemorating Ali al-Bayt. No problem. But first, the most common thing is Quran and Ibadah. Therefore, Imam Ali salatu wasalam, during those days when he was teaching Quran, he realized that many people didn't know anything about Quran. That time. And today, if I look at my situation, I'll say it's the same. With all the effort of Ali al-Bayt, I still don't know some of the uh, teachings of Quran. Imam Ali salatu wasalam, one day somebody came to him. And he said to Imam, I have a question from Quran. Then Imam told him, yeah, ask any question. Why a long time you don't know? He said, no, we were blocked from learning about Quran. We were told only recite, forget about the meaning of Quran. Then Imam alayhi salatu wasalam asked him, what is your point? He said, there is a verse in chapter Zumar 56, where Allah said, ya hasrata ala ma farratu fi jambillah. Allah said, on the day of Qiyamah, some people will say, woe on us. We did not observe the right of Allah. So he asked Imam, what is the meaning of this verse? Zumar 56. Imam said, of course, Hasrata means Yawm al Qiyamah, as Allah mentioned in chapter Maryam, Yawm al Hasra means the day of Qiyamah. But the second one, Imam said, Fi Jambillah. Imam said, this word, Fi Jambillah, one of the verification of that Jambillah is Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Oh, you look at the situation of that time when Imam gave the interpretation like that. That was a time when people were asked not to do anything about Imam Ali. Don't read anything about Imam Ali. Stay completely away from what Imam Ali established. That's number one. Number two, salawat was stopped from being recited. This salawat that you are doing today, you find it very cheap. Where Rasulullah said, Kili de halli mushkila. It is a key for solution to all problems. Wallah, that time when you read books, salawat was blocked completely. And number three, not only salawat, when Imam said, Jambullah is Amir al Mu'minin, Imam said that was the time when the true companions of Rasulullah were sidelined completely. Therefore, those of us who have a relationship with Sahifa to Sajjadiyah, when you read Sahifa to Sajjadiyah, and even not only Sahifa, most of the du'as of Imam Zain al -Abdi, you find some of those du'as, there are a lot of salawat in it. After small thing, salawat, salawat. You know the reason? Because that time they stopped people from reciting salawat, and Imam made sure in du'a there will be a lot of salawat. Yani Imam Zain al Abidin through du'as, Ya Allah. The entire Tawheed, justice of Allah, Nubuwa, Imamat, Ma'ad, is all in the du'as of Imam Zain al Abidin. Salawat, salawat, sometimes I don't understand. Ya Imam said, because that time they stopped the Ummah from saying salawat. Therefore, one of the riwayahs said, say salawat until people tell you you are mad people. Because there was a time when people had no opportunity to mention Salawat of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So therefore, number one is through Quran. Number two also about Quran. That same time, in those days, people would hide. and This all people used to hide. To come and ask Imam Zain al-Abidin. One person came to Imam, chapter Hijr, verse 85. He asked him a very beautiful question about Quran, where Allah said, Fasfah is Safhal Jamil. Fasfah means have a sabr, but beautiful sabr. So he asked Imam Zalabdi, what is the meaning of this ayah? Because there is a message Imam wants to put across. Imam said, whenever somebody wronged you, you should forgive that person unconditionally. That is the meaning of Fasfah Safhal Jamil. Then he asked him, what do you mean? He said, because look at the difficult situation we are faced with. If we do not have a sabr, we will not be able to reach out to those who are innocent. So therefore, we all need to have a sabr. Animosity doesn't help. 
Cursing, insulting doesn't help. The best way to bring people, Imam Ali alayhi salam in Najul Balaga, I'm not sure, Khutbah 26, he said, La taqunu sababin wallain. Do not become those people who insult and those people who curse. They ask Imam why. Imam said, because the best way to talk about those people is to narrate what they did in their life. When you do that to their followers, then you have established hujja against them. But if I mount curse, I mount insult, fine. The person may also insult my imams, na'uzu billah. So therefore, imam number two is about Quran, trying to teach us how we should behave and how we should expose the people of the world to this message of Al Bayt, alayhi salatu wasalam. The third one, somebody came, chapter Ma'arij, verse 24. Allah said, Hakkun ma'loom al-sail wal mahroom. He asked Imam, what is this Hakkun ma'loom? Hakkun ma'loom in translation means known truth. Imam said, known truth is that you give a sadaqa even if you are not asked to give sadaqa. Then he asked him, sadaqa for what? He said, sadaqa to enliven the affairs of Ahli Muhammad. How many times we mention? When Muharram comes, brothers and sisters, let the world know that it is Muharram. That is how Imam Zain al Abidin exposed the world to Muharram. If you are capable, you have money. Go and hire one billboard in the city. Write humanitarian message of Imam Hussein. The world is hungry, I'm telling you. I'm a convert, I'm telling you. World is hungry. World is in need of this media to, liber to liberate it. The world is in jahiliya after the coming of Rasulullah with Quran. And the knowledge is with the followers of Ahlul Bayt. You go give some money, 100,000 shilling, 200,000 shilling. Go and give it out. Buy this billboard, hire it for that period of five days. Write something about Abba Abdullah. Who knows how many people's life will be changed through this message of Abba Abdullah. When Imam alayhi salatu wasalam taught us Imam Mubakir's way of enlivening the message of Ali Muhammad is to sit in different corners to call Hussein Hussein. Why so? So that people would come and ask who is Hussein. So therefore, Imam Zain al-Abidin, when he came back to Karbala, his role was not to sit one place in his cocoon, in his prison. Huh? No, Imam was going from one point to another. Hussein, Umm al we saw Abbas like this, or Umm al like that, this like that, for people to come and ask him. So therefore, our task and role, respected brothers and sisters, is to take this message of Hussein. Hussein is not only limited to Karbala. Hussein is not only limited to the 10th day of Muharram. Imam Hussein al Abidin taught us we are victorious, and if our Shias realize that we are victorious, they will not leave that message hanging, they will take the message out. So, therefore, Imam, through Quran, through Riwayat, he spread that message of Ali Muhammad. Another platform which he used the most was through his du'as and monajat. To such an extent, some Christians came and said, Ya Allah, we love your monajat. He asked them why. They said, because we are people of spirituality. Whenever you recite, we don't want to go. Yani in the monajat of Imam, alayhi salatu wassalam, one monajat is ziyara, is ziyara to Aminullah. How he described Imam Ali in Ziyara for people to know who Imam Ali was. Imam Zain al Abidin talked in Ziyara, Assalamu alayka ya Amin Allah. How many times you recite Amin Allah? Which is one of the recommended Ziyara for us to recite. They said Imam Zain al Abidin and Imam Bakr, as he was young, he would hold his hand and they will go close to Najaf where they could not even really demarcated a right place where Imam was buried and Imam stood there and composed that ziyarat Amin Allah. One of the legacy of Imam Zain al-Abidin to teach people about the fada'il of Al-Bayt is the du'as of every day we do. You know in salah after salah, not the uh, 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 ta'kibat. There is du'a for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We do it here. Those du'as are from Imam Zain al-Abidin. <laughs> He used to do it to tell people, Ali al Bayt are of this fadila. And Ali al Bayt are of this maqam. And Ali al Bayt are of this position and status. So, therefore, my advice, brothers, is that Imam Zain al Abidin struggled for 33 years. He struggled for 34 years. He did not struggle for nothing. 
He struggled so that me and you will get the message and pass on the message to others. Everybody should try to do something to make Imam Zainul Abidin happy. Don't fold your arm in Muharram and suffer. Go out, expose the world to the message of Hussein. Me and you, we already have the message. We have it. No problem. We only pray that that message will remain with us. But what of those who are out there? Who is going to expose them to that message? Do something. Do something. Enliven the affairs on your own, your family, jama at whatever. Do something. Spread the message. The world is thirsty. Jahiliya is too much in this world. And Imam Zain al-Abidin taught us, wherever you are, make sure you speak about my father in order for people to know. Because when I came back from Karbala, I spent the whole my life only remembering my father and no one else. No one else. During eating, Imam Hussein. Going to the mosque, Imam Hussein. Going out with his entourage, Imam Hussein. Meeting Jewish, Imam Hussein. Christian, Imam Hussein. So therefore, this were the role of Imam, and that should be my responsibility and your responsibility if we are indeed true lovers of Ali Muhammad. But now if you are not worried about it, and then we want to do something else, then the enemies will attack us. Isn't it I mentioned on Sunday? Our enemies... They only look at the way we do our gum and masa'ib and they attack us there. They don't look at the intellectual aspect of Shia. When they attack us, they say, look at the way they do Zanjir. Look at the way they do Kamazani. This is where they attack us. Therefore, on their television, they show nothing except these things. Huh? Whereas, Ya Allah, Ahlul Bayt, intellectuality of Ahlul Bayt, spirituality of Ahlul Bayt, is mala to addu ala toksa. It is uncountable. So therefore, everybody, I challenge you, I challenge myself. I challenge you, I challenge myself, fathers and mothers, all brothers and sisters. What are we doing to keep spreading the message of Abba Abdullah? We are doing for ourselves. We are alive in our souls. We are still intact with this love. But let's take it out today. Once you take it out there, then Imam will be happy and Imam will intercede for you. Let's go to the last part of my examination. Imam alayhi salatu was salam taught us which sin has which impacts on the life of a person. And Imam explained that all these things, if you are able to look after them, then you deserve to be called my Shia. But if you don't look after them, you are not my Shia. Imam Ali Salatu Salam, somebody, Khalid al Kabuli, was one of the great students of Imam. He came and asked Imam, I want to know about sins and their negative impact in our life. Imam asked him, Which one? Sins are too many. He said, No, I want to like those that in Dwayne Kumar. I want to know a sin that changed fortune. I am in a blessing, all of a sudden it changes. I want to know what sin is that. He said to Imam Ali Salatu Salam, I want to know a sin that may reduces my lifespan. Completely, the life gets reduced. Then he said, I want to know a scene that removes tawfiq and barakah from my life. And this is what you recite in the dua. Allah min a'uzubika min nafsin la tashma. Wa min kalbin la yaksha. Wa min ilmin la yamfa. Wa min salatin la turufa. Wa min duaen la yusma. You know how Imam responded? Amazing response. And this really touched my heart. Imam looked at Khalid al Kabuli. He said, Khalid, I want to teach you something about sin. Then he said, There are five sins. Whoever commits them, the following repercussions will be there in his life. One, dua will not be accepted. That's one. Number two, his relationship with Allah will be severe. You will not have that sweet relationship with Allah. Number three, Imam said, Spirituality will be less in your life. Spirituality doesn't mean I make a lot of salat. Ah. Spirituality is something that grows. So Imam said, if that sins are in your life, your spirituality will be less. And number four, Imam said, if those sins are committed, you will give up on yourself. Sometimes a person give up on his person. And then lastly, Imam said, when those sins are committed, you will never enjoy the worship of Allah. One, Imam mentioned, su'uniyya. 
evil intention. An evil intention has two wings. Number one, lack of sincerity in whatever you do in your life. And number two, you think evil about others. These two things are very, very important, which Imam explained. Therefore, Rasulullah mentioned, Allah doesn't look at the way you look. But Allah is interested in your soul and your heart and your deeds. Su'uniya, evil intention and sincerity. Sometimes it's not that we don't help. It's not that we don't do good work. But sincerity is not there. Not every mosque that we build will be like the mosque of Kuba. Some of it will be Masjid Dirar. Not every sacrifice we do will be like the sacrifice of Habil. Some of it will be like that of Kabil. And not every book we write will be like Mafati ul Janan and Al Ghadir. Some of it will be something else. Because Masjid Quba, there was sincerity. Habil was sincere. This Mafati ul Janan called on me dua. It's not the best dua book. But because of the sincerity of Ayatollah Qumi, then it reached every corner of the way. Even in the Sunni mosque, you go, you find Mafati al-Jinnah. So therefore, the first sin is su'uniya, bad, evil intention. That's number one. Number two sin, Imam said, which will cause all this damage in our life. You don't feel spirituality. Imam said, when you have a negative reservation towards somebody in your heart. Khabusu surura, as Sometimes you see a person, he look at you, he smile. But the heart, ya Allah, what is there, Allah knows. Sometimes he argue, you, he laugh. But what is inside his heart is something else. Imam said, whoever is like that, you will have these problems. Number three, Imam mentioned, Tarqul tasdik bil ijaba. Whoever give up on Allah, that Allah will not solve my problem. You know how many times people, they have problems, they make dua, they say, no, 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 no. I don't think Allah will solve my problem. Imam said this is a sin that will severe a relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will not enjoy the sincerity. The fourth one is this point which I've been making. Imam said, when it is salat time, and a person delayed this salat for no reason, until the time of Salat is over. He will never enjoy the taste of spirituality. You ignore Salat completely until the time of Salat is over. And I'll give an example, Imam. You know, one day there was a person who was traveling between Mecca and Medina in a caravan. So the caravan got stuck at one stage. So this person went inside the desert, whatever. He was making ibadah. By the time he came, the caravan left. When the caravan left, now the whole place was swept by darkness. He got scared. What is going to happen to me? I don't know. He turned left and right. There was nobody. It was just a road and there was nobody. So he saw a tree very far. So he went to that tree. And he climbed on top of the tree. He said, let him relax here because... It's not a scorpion or a snake will harm me until the next day morning. He said, as I was on this tree, in the middle of the night, I heard the sound of a person and the step of a person. When I turned, I saw a person trying to collect water from the trees, and he started making wudu. This person finished wudu, and I saw him performing salah. I was just looking at him, I said nothing, and the person didn't see me. He performed his salah, later fajr, he performed his fajr. When he finished his fajr, I came down and I asked him, who are you? Then he said, I am Zainul Abidin, the son of a Hussein. Salah. Therefore, I mention, if you do ma'atam and you don't do salah, forget it. Wallahi, forget it. This is a passionate call. Muharram, you come mosque full, full, full. Ma'atam, full, full. Salat time empty. Where is Abba Abdullah and the followers? Ajib. Majal is taking place. Hundreds of people are standing outside. Where is Abba Abdullah and our people? Do we really think we are on the right track? 
People have talking points. Salat is going on. This is Imam Zainul Abidin in the darkness of the night. Where he came from, Allah knows. This person came down and asked him, Who are you? He said, I am Zainul Abidin, the son of Hussein. I saw you struggling to collect water. He said, yes, I have to do because I don't want to miss my salat on time. Because this is what gives us the knowledge of the secret of this world. Zainul Abidin, the beauty of the worshippers. Alil Bayt never joke with salat. That was on top of their agenda and that adumed the priority in their agenda. So therefore, Muhibbin Ali Muhammad, let us be careful and be worried about our ibadah. You see, when your salat is intact and you do ma'atam, you feel it inside. One scholar said, if you are a true lover of Ahlul Bayt, the moment you start doing ma'atam, each hit you hit, you are removing one sin and gone out from your heart. Wilaya is something else, huh? It's not I come, I do, I go because I want to do. No. It's a signal. And we need to do it with that love and passion. Imam Hussein, Zainab cried on that day. So you do matam, sawab. But Imam also performs salah on time as we mentioned. So you have to make sure all the two are parallel. But if the mosque is empty and matam is full, what message are you giving the enemies of Ali Muhammad? Who are giving them the leeway to attack the Shias? We ourselves. That is my personal opinion. You may challenge me in that. But I think if we adhere to the love of Quran al al to the love of Salat al al to the love of humanitarian work they had, Wallah, the world will love Shias except the Munafik only. But we are giving them chance because something that are mustahab or even they are not mustahab, we take it high. What is wajib is down. So if it what is wajib is down and what is I don't know whether mustahab or not mustahab is high, then what are you trying to tell people? So therefore Imam alayhi salatu was salam when it comes to that is very important. Not to take much of your time. The fifth one Imam told him. Using bad words. You know, some people, I don't know, because sometimes people in corporate, for instance, you meet different people. So sometimes there are certain language people use, which is not a good language, but among themselves it's okay. When the person comes, he forget he does it. Imam said, whoever uses bad words, that will sever his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Completely. Therefore, Allah said, Wahudu ila kalimat tayyib. You strive and go in full force in saying something good. Therefore, Rasulullah said, Arram Allah will jannah ala kulli fahashin. Allah will deny jannah from anyone who uses vulgar bad words. Some people, when they open their mouth, Ya Allah, there is no rahma in it anymore. Therefore, Rasulullah said, Al Muslimun, a man salim al Muslimun, Melisani hi wayade. A Muslim is someone whom Muslims are protected from the harm of his hand and the harm of his tongue. Last but not least, because I search for this riwaya, Imam Zain al Abidin said, When people don't visit the graves, their relationship with Allah will be severe. You know, we have a norm here. I don't know whether I say no. If a person dies and people don't know him, they don't come. If there is one thing which you don't need to know someone to do, it's death. Imam said, I'm this rewire. Imam said the last sin is that when people, they don't bother going to the cemetery. They don't bother visiting graves. Because he said visiting graves will remind you of Allah. And when your time is up, angels will come and also give you that moral support. So Imam Ali Salat was salam said, graves. So therefore I urge one and all. When you hear information, announcement, someone is dead. At least come for Tashir if you cannot go to the grave. Not leave three people, four people, five people to come. Let's rush in attending the graves. 
in going to the cemetery. This is something that will keep on reminding us of our destiny. People don't go. People stay away from it completely. Therefore, when I saw this why I was shocked. Imam said, have you said one of the sins is that when you see people don't bother about going to cemetery and graves, then you know that there is a problem. They are severing their relationship with Qiyamah and in doing so with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, I urge you, going to cemetery is very, very important. When you hear somebody dies, you don't worry. It's not like marriage. Of course, marriage, even if you come, give more it's fine. But it's not like marriage. Death is death because that is your destiny and that is my destiny. You never know where you are going to die, who is going to make your ghost, what is going to happen to you. Only Allah knows. So the good thing is that if I attend wherever I die, I should not have any worry anymore. So therefore, I urge you, Mu'minin, let's try as much as we can. When somebody dies, let's come in numbers. Give that support because Rasulullah said, if 40 believers escort a believer to the cemetery, even if that believer is a gunakar, Allah will look at the faces of these believers who are chanting, Ya Allah, we know nothing from this person except good. Because of them only, Allah will grant that person Jannat al firdaus Do we want to deny our mayyitin Jannat al firdaus Therefore, we need to try, brothers and sisters. Once we try, inshallah, then wallahi, our relationship with Allah will be intact and our love for Ali Muhammad will be intact. In conclusion, let's all try as much as we can. Let us take this message across. Let us try to be truly lovers and shias of Ali Muhammad. Let us follow Imam Zain al-Abidin, the way he taught us, and the way he did things, let us follow it that way. And if you do that, our behavior alone will change the Ummah's perception about the school of thought of Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi salatu wassalam. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdillah. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Rasulillah. السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين كل عين باقية يوم القيامة إلا عينا بقات للغسان. رواية from أهل البيت said where whoever cries and shed tears for Abu Abdullah al Husayn, if that tears is a true tears, that tears is capable of granting him Jannat al Firdaus on the day of Qiyamah. You know, Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salatu was salam taught us how to honor those people who laid their lives for the school of thought of Ahl al Bayt and for Islam in general. Even Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in Quran, how many times He remind us, Remember Yaqub, remember Ishaq. Allah wants us to remember them and cry for what they went through so that we honor them and honor ourselves by crying for those people. And the same thing, if not because of the sacrifices of those people, none of us was going to be here tonight. Therefore, we begin our Messiah by saying, if not because of the sacrifice of the 10th day of Muharram, none of us was, going, was not going to be here. Therefore, we need to honor those sacrifices. Those sacrifices from the sacrifice of the six-month-old baby. Not only that, to the sacrifice of the man who was laid down next to the water of Furat. Not only that, to the sacrifice of the man who was beheaded and the body was separated from the heart. Not only that, from the sacrifice of those ladies who were slapped and their cheeks turned dark and black because of the slapping. Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam taught us to remember Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam. You know very well, Imam Zain al Abidin knew no one except Aba Abdullah al Hussein. 
When he was born, the mother, Sharibanu, died. So he only knew the father. Now you understand how painful it was for Zain al Abidin. Therefore, when he kept on crying and crying and crying and crying, they would come and ask him, Why can't you stop crying, Zain al Abidin? He said, Look at Yaqub alayhi salam. Yaqub was blessed with 12 children. One of them was missing and he knew he would come back. But Yaqub cried until he lost his eyesight. He said, I lost 70 members of my family. I saw how brutally they killed my father. Therefore, when he came back to Medina to Munawwara, one narration says, one day Imam Zain al-Abidin was walking in Medina. As he was walking in Medina, he met a butcher who was slaughtering an animal. And then Imam Zain al-Abidin came next to this butcher. He said, oh butcher, can I ask you a question? He said, yes, ask me. He said, I want to ask you, do you give water to these animals before you slaughter? He said, yes, every animal deserves to be given water before it is slaughtered. Then he said, Wallah, I want to tell you, my father, Abu Abdullah, was denied water in Karbala. Now one narration says, as he was walking one day, Imam Zain al-Abidin met one man and he stopped that man. He said to the man, oh man, when I die, will you bury me? <laughs> Then he said, what question are you asking me? Everyone deserves to be buried. He said, they laid the body of my father on the ground. They mutilated the body of my father without burial. One day, narration says, Imam Zain al Abidin had one man. He was shouting and calling in Medina, stranger, stranger, stranger. Narration says, Imam Zain al Abidin went next to this man. And he asked him, Why are you calling stranger? What's wrong with you? Don't you have a place to stay? He said, I have a place to stay. Don't you have food to eat? He said, I have food to eat. If you die, will there know anyone to bury? He said, There will be someone to bury me. He said, Don't call yourself a stranger. Stranger is the stranger of Karbala. But the most hateful one was when Imam Zain al Abidin was about to depart from this world. And the one who narrated beautifully is Imam Bakir alayhi salam. They said as the poison was affecting the body of Imam Zain al Abidin, Imam Bakir came and hugged the father. He was on the chest of the father. Then the father started crying uncontrollably. Then Bakir also kept on crying and crying and crying and crying. <laughs> hey, Wallah, Bakir looked at the father and said, Father, why are you crying like this? <laughs> And Imam Zain al Abidin said, Yes, I am crying because now I am dying and your Bakir is with me. Whereas my father, when he was dying, Shimmer sat on the chest of my father. <laughs> Let him leave you with this last one. <laughs> the same incident happened when they were going to bury Fatima al Zahra. <laughs> After breaking the rib of Fatima al Zahra, <laughs> as they were taking Fatima al Zahra to go and bury her in that darkness of the night, <laughs> hey, Wallah, they placed Fatima on the ground. The narration says Imam Hassan came to the body of Fatima. When he came, he sat next to the body of the mother. He called the Amma, Amma, Amma. There was no response. <laughs> Imam Hassan left there. Then Abba Abdullah went to the body of the mother. <laughs> When Abba Abdullah went, he sat next to the body of the mother. Abba Abdullah hugged his mother and he called that mama, mama, painful quietness. One narration says it was revealed to Amir al Mu'minin go and remove the Abba Abdullah from the body of Fatima. Therefore, scholars ask a question if angels cannot afford to see Abba Abdullah. On the chest of Fatima al Zahra, how did they appear to see Shimmer on the chest of Abba Abdullah? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajoon. Wa si'alamu alladhina dhalamu wa yamun kalabin yan kalibun. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Ma'atam al-Husayn.